Welcome to Senior High School Math Series. In this presentation, let us discuss t-test for a mean under hypothesis testing in statistics and probability. Before we continue, let us recall an important concept and that is using the t-distribution table. One of the characteristics that the t-distribution differs from the standard normal distribution is that the t-distribution is actually a family of curves based on the concept of degrees of freedom, which is related to sample size. The degrees of freedom are the number of values that are free to vary after a sample statistic has been computed. And they tell the researcher which specific curve to use when a distribution consists of a family of curves. The symbol DF is used for the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom for a confidence interval for the mean are found by subtracting 1 from the sample size. That is df is equal to n minus 1. Let us have number 1. Find the critical t value for alpha or the significance level 0 0.05 with sample size equal to 17 in a right tail test. Using the concept of the degrees of freedom and its formula, we have df is equal to 16. That is from n minus 1 and n is 17. So, in using the t-distribution table, on the first column, we see the degrees of freedom. Then we have 16. And on the first three rows, we will identify the type of test, whether it is a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test, and then identify or look for the significance level. So in a right tail test, we have a one tail test and alpha is equal to 0 0.05. So we have one tail test at 0 0.05 and then draw an imaginary line so that these two lines intersect for which or where these two values intersect that will be the critical value for T. So in here, T critical is equal to positive 1.746 since this is a right tail test. Let us have another one. Find the critical T value for alpha equal to 0 0.01 with DF equal to 22 or the degrees of freedom in a left tail test. So this time we're already given the degrees of freedom. On the table, we look for that degrees of freedom 22 and since still this is a one-tailed test being left-tailed so we look for alpha 0 0.01 under one-tailed test and then these two values intersect at 2.508 and since this is a left-tailed test t critical is equal to negative 2.508 Let's have another one. Find the critical T values for alpha equal to 0 0.10 with degrees of freedom equal to 18 in a two-tailed test. So we have the table. Degrees of freedom is 18 and this is a two-tailed test at alpha 0.1. So these two values intersect at 1.734. Now, this is a two-tailed test, then the t-critical values will be positive, negative, 1.734. That means positive 1.734 to the right of the mean and negative 1.734 to the left of the mean. Let us continue with the definition of a t-test. The t-test is a statistical test for the mean of a population and is used when the population is normally or approximately normally distributed 
the population standard deviation is unknown. Remember that sample must be drawn at random. These samples taken from the population are independent. In the previous video lesson, we discussed about the Z-test in hypothesis testing. This time, since we are introducing the T-test, let us help the students decide on whether using Z-test or T-test in their hypothesis testing. What you're going to do is to follow the following flowchart. The first thing to ask yourself is that, is the population standard deviation known? Or is the population variance known? Since you may know the population standard deviation by getting the square root of the population variance. If the answer is yes, then use the Z test. Use the Z sub alpha over 2 values and that population standard deviation in the formula. Now, in the Z test, we said that it is used when the sample size is greater than or equal to 30. What if the sample is less than 30? And still, you know the population standard deviation. Then, the variable must be normally distributed when n is less than 30. Still, you will use the Z test. What if the population standard deviation is not known? Then, that's the time you're going to use the T test or use the T sub alpha over 2 values and the sample standard deviation in the formula. If you do not know the population standard deviation, then get the sample standard deviation from the samples you obtained in your gathering of data. Now let us have the formula for t-test value. As discussed in the previous video lesson on z-test, most statistical tests are done in the following general formula. The test value is equal to the observed value minus the expected value divided by the standard error. If you haven't seen that video lesson, the link is on the description of this video. Going back to the formula, x bar is the sample mean. The Greek letter mu is the hypothesized population mean. Lowercase letter s from the English alphabet is the sample standard deviation and n is the sample size. In testing hypothesis by using the t-test traditional method, follow the same procedure as for the z-test, except use the t-distribution table in identifying the critical values. If you would like a copy of the t-distribution, you may download from the link given on the description of this video. Step 1 is still state the hypothesis and identify the claim. Find the critical values from the t-distribution table. Compute the test value using the formula from the previous slides. And then make the decision whether to reject or do not reject the null hypothesis. And then summarize the results. Let us have an example. The COVID-19 infection. A medical investigation claims that the average number of infections per week in the country is 45,600. A random sample of 10 weeks had a mean number of 48,270 infections. The sample standard deviation is 4,800. Is there enough evidence to reject the investigator's claim at alpha 0.05? Let us begin with step 1, that is state the hypothesis and identify the claim. For the null hypothesis, there is no difference in the average number of infections per week. And since from the given information in the problem, the average number of infections per week in the country, is 45,600, then in symbols, h sub 0 mu is equal to 45,600. For the alternative hypothesis, there is difference in the average number of infections per week. 
So in symbols, H sub 1 mu is not equal to 45,600. And from the problem, we can say that the claim in this test is the null hypothesis. Let us proceed to step 2, finding the critical value. Since alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and the test is a two-tailed test with degrees of freedom equal to 9, that is from the sample size of 10, and 10 minus 1 is equal to 9, in the t-distribution table, we look at the degrees of freedom equal to 9 on the first column. And on the rows for two-tailed tests, we look at significance level 0 0.05. These two values intersect at 2.262. Therefore, the t-critical values will be positive negative 2.262. Let us proceed to step 3, computing the test value. From the given information, mu is equal to 45,600. X bar or the mean, sample mean is 48,270. Sample standard deviation is 4,800. And N, the sample size is equal to 10. Substituting these values to the given formula in the previous slides, we have 48,270 minus 45,600 all over 4,800 divided by the square root of 10. Using our scientific calculator, we can readily press fraction bar and input the values 48,270 minus 45,600. Then divided by, in the denominator, another fraction, 4,800 over the square root symbol, the square root of 10. In the calculator, it's 1.75901694847. So we can round this off to 1.759. Hence, the test value is, is 1.759. Let us have step 4, that is making the decision. From step 2, we have the two critical values as negative 2.262 and positive 2.262. These two areas to the left and to the right of the mean are our critical regions. In between these two critical regions is our non-critical region with area 0.9500. The test value of positive 1.759 is in the non-critical region. It is between the two critical values of negative 2.262 and positive 2.262. Therefore, the decision is do not reject the null hypothesis. In step 5, we summarize the result. In step 1, the claim is the null hypothesis. And in step 4, we did not reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, the decision, there is not enough evidence to reject the investigator's claim. Let us have the next example, delivery driver's income. If Blagger claims that the average daily gross income of an on-demand delivery driver during the quarantine period in NCR is less than 1,500 pesos. A random sample of 8 delivery riders were selected and their daily gross income are as shown. Is there enough evidence to support the blogger's claim at alpha 0.10? The result of the survey is 1,500, 1,485, 1,500, 1,375, 1,750, 1,375, 1,500, and 1,375 for the eight randomly selected delivery riders. Let us have step one, state the hypothesis and identify the claim. This time, we will just be giving this, the null and alternative hypothesis in symbols. For the null hypothesis, 
mu is equal to 1,500 pesos. And for the alternative hypothesis, mu is less than 1,500 pesos. And the claim is the alternative hypothesis. For step 2, we're going to use the T distribution table that is using the degrees of freedom equal to, since there are 8 um, elements in this sample size or in this sample, then we will use degrees of freedom equal to 7. We have a one-tailed test at alpha 0 0.10 and these two values meet at 1.415 and since this is a left-tailed test, we have T critical equal to negative 1.415. Step 3, we compute the test value from the given information. Mu is equal to 1,500. This time, we are not given the sample mean. Therefore, we are going to use the formula for the mean, that is the measures of central tendency, for the values 1,500 and so on. And also, we are going to use the formula for the sample standard deviation in measures of variability since we are not given the sample standard deviation. Using the tabular form, we get the, the total as 11,860 and to get the sample mean, we divide this by 8. Therefore, the mean is or the sample mean is 1,482.50. Again, using the table to find the needed values for the formula for sample standard deviation, that is the square root of summation of x minus x bar squared, x being the individual values and x bar being the mean of the given data, is squared divided by the sample size minus 1. And we get the sample standard deviation as equal to 123.72. The sample size is equal to 8. Then these values will be plugged in into the formula. That will be T is equal to 1,482.5 minus 1,500 all over 123.72 divided by the square root of 8. And using our scientific calculator, we will get negative 0.4001. So the test value is negative 0.4001. Let us proceed to step 4. We make the decision. From step 2, the critical value negative 1.415 is to the left of the mean. So our critical region is to the left of that T critical value on the curve. And the non-critical region will be to the right of the critical value. The test value of negative 0.4005 is greater than negative 1.415 and it falls in the non-critical region. Hence, the decision, do not reject the null hypothesis. Step 5, we summarize the result. From step 1 and step 4 results, we summarized it as there is not sufficient evidence to support the blogger's claim. That will be all. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more math lessons.